Hello and welcome to this episode of Spirit Plant Medicine here on Conscious Living Network. <clears throat> I'm Mark Curran and I'm happy to be here with my friend and co-organizer and partner with the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, Mr. Stephen Gray. And we are blessed to have a group of indigenous curanderos from South America that we want to speak about uh, some of the work that they're doing to preserve their lands. And I'm going to pass it over to Stephen Gray to make some introductions and tell you more about what we're going to be sharing here today. Hello, Stephen. Thanks for being here as always. Thanks, Mark. Uh, yeah, so just to clarify, uh, um, these two gentlemen are from Mexico, um, and I'm not sure if they're both medicine men, One, of, at least one of them is, but I'm going to um, do a brief introduction of each, each one of them, a brief bio, um, but I just want to also say that the purpose of this, uh, or what they're doing, what these gentlemen are doing, uh, is quite remarkable in my opinion. Um, they are traveling the world uh, to educate people about their lands, their culture, and their sacred medicines. And they're coming to our conference uh, to talk about that as well. And they will have uh, also a table with their artwork, which um, Mark uh, is going to show uh, partway during the, the, um, the conversation today. So um, <clears throat> with no further ado, as the cliche goes, um, the two gentlemen that we have with us today, one of them is Don Rafael Pisano who is a Maracame, also known as a medicine man of the Wirarica nation uh, in Jalisco, Me Mexico. Mexico. Um, uh, uh, some people may have heard of the term huichol, which is the, the term that uh, the S uh, Spanish conquistadores um, imposed upon them, but their name for themselves is Wirarica. Um, Don Rafael is one of the few remaining medicine men, the Maracames, that have walked the ancient pilgrimage routes to sacred sites um, like Wirikuta, which they're going to talk about, by the way. He's been a governor of his village, and he's now assigned by his tribe to represent the Wirikuta Preservation Project to preserve the medicine and the sacred site of Wirikuta. Um, and the other gentleman we're looking at here is Miguel Carrillo. Bienvenido, Miguel. Um, uh, Miguel is an important representative of the, for the preservation of the land and the culture of the Wirarica Nation of northern Mexico, known to some, again, as the Huichol. Um, he is also a musician and an artist whose work is known in museums and exhibits around Mexico. Miguel, uh, I think with Don Rafael, um, now travels the world to raise money and awareness for the future of Wirikuta and the Wirarica Nation. Bienvenidos, caballeros. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, that's welcome for our English folks, <laughs> English speakers. Um, so um, let's let's get right into it. Um, please describe to us uh, anything you want to tell us about Wirakuta itself and the Wirakuta Preservation Project. Hay algo que les quiera explicar sobre Viricuta, que es Viricuta y que es el proyecto de preservación de Viricuta que se tiene. Viricuta no tiene nada para la vida. Viricuta no tiene nada para la vida. Viricuta no tiene nada para la vida. What Tatuata 
Bueno, el significado que dio mi tío dice que Vilikuta significa donde las deidades, eh, nuestros dioses, soportan nuestra vida, nuestra vela encendida. Que él peregrinó desde que tenía 12 años a pie. Y desde ese tiempo se ha, se ha modificado la peregrinación, a dejar ofrenda y que ya no ha sido lo mismo. Y Virikuta eh, significa también donde hay hikuri, donde está la medicina, el peyote. My uncle here is saying that Virikuta is where life is born, is where the, the deities of the Mother Earth live is also, is not the same. Uh, uh, the pilgrimage is not the same anymore since private property has come in the land because a lot of the, the spiritual preparation that needs to go to pick up this medicine has been distorted because we cannot go to our sacred sites and visit like that. So it's not the same, the pilgrimage. and is where the the heart of our medicine of peyote hikuri lives in in Virikut. excuse me um uh, gracias uh, so uh, uh oh i'm sorry i forgot to mention uh, uh to the viewers and listeners that uh santiago is uh, functioning as the interpreter or translator here uh, thank you santiago for doing that um, thank you yeah, and uh, so um, <clears throat> uh, I, I would like to ask you, what is going on? Could you elaborate on what's going on that's made it so difficult uh, to preserve the land, the culture, and the medicine? Este que ha sido lo más difícil hoy en día para preservar la medicina, la cultura, porque porque está ¿Por qué se enfrentan a tantas cuestiones el pueblo guerrero? ¿Por qué está pasando? Bueno, nosotros, los guerreros Tali, vivimos a 600, 800 kilómetros de Viricuta. Eh, Viricuta pertenece uh, en el centro norte de México. Nosotros vivimos en el eh, centro occidente de México, casi en el Pacífico. Y como estamos lejos de, de la, del desierto, es muy difícil controlar el lugar sagrado porque ahí habitan otras personas, es otro es estado, ahí no viven ni un huirárica y, y es por eso es difícil eh, controlar el lugar sagrado porque ahí están los ejidatarios, eh, los habitantes de ese lugar. Ese territorio solamente es para nosotros, para entregar ofrendas, pero los que viven ahí son otros. So, Vilicuta, uh, the, the most difficult part to preserve nowadays our culture and this medicine that grows there. Uh, the, our culture evolves around this medicine and we live around five, uh, 800 kilometers away from where this medicine grows from Virikuta, that's around 400 miles or 380 miles around uh, from where the desert is. So we used to pilgrim there and we still it to this day. So it's land that is not in our like tribal, uh, what they, they, what they call community is what they will call a reservation in the United States. So it's outside the, like the reservation, our tribe, our tribal land, uh, Birikuta is outside our tribal land where this peyote grows. But this is where we go pray every year since before we can remember, no? Since the beginning of time for us. So we, it's been difficult to keep, to keep it and preserve it when it's outside our uh, territory. 
Yeah. Um, I understand there have been a lot of mining operations in that general area. Can you say something about what's going on with that and why that's a problem? Yeah, que si puedes hablar un poco sobre las minas, que él se ha enterado mucho sobre las minas, que por qué las mineras son problemas en tal época. Mm. Anteriormente, cuando mis papás, mis abuelos eh, iban a peregrinación, no había eh, extracción de minas. Bueno, sí lo hubo en siglos pasados, pero donde está el territorio de nosotros, donde está la medicina, todavía no existía. Y ya a partir del año 2000 en adelante, eh, hubo... Uh, para proyectos eh, de extraer minas. Entonces, ahí es cuando nosotros manifestamos que se detuvieran esa, las, las mineras, porque mm, es, es lo único que queda ya, donde están los manantiales, donde están los lugares sagrados para nosotros. Anteriormente se habían trabajado a otra parte de la montaña, hacia la parte... Norte. So the the in the old days when my grandpas used to pilgrim there, uh, we're talking about the uh, 1950s, 1940s, uh, 1940s so on, because so uh, um, there used to be no mines. There used to be mines in this area, but in the mountain range, uh, more on the old days, but uh now uh, nowadays in 2010 is when the mining corporations came in being uh, the biggest ones that are in canada and uh, they came in there and that's when we started protesting uh, against the federal government to have a, a, to pro to help us no to suspend these mining concessions that were there because that's where our last uh, springs that we believe life comes from there uh, are, are living. So uh, we need, that's why we're protesting about it right now. Gracias. Um, so uh, this, this, is, this, next, this statement I'm about to say is leading to a question. Here in Canada, and I think uh, to a large degree in the United States as well, um, you probably know that over the last several hundred years, the indigenous cultures of these uh, areas, uh, sometimes referred to as Turtle Island, have been uh, devastated. And um, most of the traditions have been destroyed. Uh, some have survived, and there is now some degree of um, uh, re renaissance or reclamation of some of the cultures mm -hmm. um, uh, and the traditional ways. And some of the young people in some of our native communities are learning their original languages again and so on. So I'm wanting to ask the gentleman, uh, what is, how would you say is the state, the current state of uh, traditional culture and uh, we, we, we Radica nation at this time? How are they doing in terms of maintaining traditional uh, under worldviews, practices, languages, etc.? He has seen a lot in the territory of all America that there has been a lot of loss of culture por the devastation of the resources natural resources, like the mines and the question is pregunta es, ¿En qué estado está la cultura huirrárica hoy en día por la devastación de sus...? O sea, ¿crees que se ha perdido mucho o no la cultura huirrárica? ¿Crees que se ha devastado mucho? O sea, eh, nosotros tenemos cinco lugares sagrados. Eh, está el mar, San, en el mar San Blas Nayarí. Ese sitio ya se protegió, está vigilado por la gente de nosotros. Y el otro está en Chapala, Jalisco, Rapa Villameta. Es un lugar sagrado de la Deidad de la Lluvia. Y también está eh, encargado por el gobierno del estado de Jalisco. Y el otro está en, en el norte, por Jorramanaca, por Durango, eh, en el cerro. Y ese también lo controla nuestros hermanos indígenas, pueblo Odam. Y, y en el centro está Teacata, 
que ese lugar sagrado está dentro de las comunidades virreales de nosotros y el otro está Viricuta al este norte eh, y es ahí donde está el ahí está el riesgo eh, ese lugar sagrado porque porque no vivimos en ese lugar y es donde hay más más eh, riesgo en que se pierda eh, los manantiales eh, la medicina el hikuri porque no hay, no ha habido vigilancia no ha habido apoyos por parte del gobierno para nosotros para que un vigilante esté ahí no ha habido eh, proyectos para reforestar las áreas para conservar la, la flora y la fauna uh, all the Wirarica people we have uh, five main sacred sites being To the west, in San Blas, Nayarit, in the ocean there, is a sacred site called Aramara that we already have managed to protect uh, what we co consider the stones that we are sacred for us and, uh, and have a territory there. And then we have in the north called uh, Jaura Manaka, Cerro Gordo, that is also protected by the Odam nation. So the brothers there help us to protect it there. And in the south, we in Chapala, Jalisco, near Guadalajara, in the lake of Chapala, there's an island uh, called Rapa Villameta. In Spanish, it's called Scorpion Island, uh, Isla de la Lacran. And there we have managed to save uh, a part of it for the tribe. And in the center of it, of, of this, we have Teacata. And that is in, in Wirarica territory in, where we live in, inside our, our, our villages. So, uh, and in the east, we have Viricuta where the medicine grows, where the peyote grows. And that's where uh, we haven't had any help to pro have it protected, even if it's, it's considered a, a natural reserve by the federal government, it's been sold. Even if we and we haven't have any support from the federal government to preserve it or have any vigilantes in the area, or uh, also preserve it from the damage or or any natural uh, predators that wanna come and threaten the biodiversity of the area. So we we haven't had any support like that. Even if we had the credentials and treaties that support us, there hasn't been any federal. Back, backing with this, so that's how we. That's why it's very problematic where the medicine grows too. Mm, okay, gracias. Yes, um, uh, I know that um, sometimes in indigenous uh, communities, some of their practices uh, are they don't want to talk about in a public way. Nonetheless, I would like to ask the gentleman. Um, what are they able and willing to tell us about the way that peyote is used in their communities? Um, I understand it's used ceremonially, but I'm wondering if they would be willing to talk a little bit about how it's used ceremonial. And I also believe that it's used, um, the peyote medicine is used uh, for various types of healing. I believe I read in a book one time that Uh, uh, women sometimes take it during pregnancy and perhaps even during the birth process. Can you, mm -hmm. can, they, can they tell us a little bit about how they use peyote and what it does, yeah. what it does for people? Yeah. Este, que si pueden explicar un poco eh, sobre cómo funciona el hikuri y porque él, él ha leído sobre los huirras, así que ha leído que hasta para embarazarse sirve las mujeres o para en diferentes ceremonias que sabe que hay cosas que no le pueden platicar a los teiguaris que esos son que esos son muy privados de ustedes pero que pues que para qué otras qué tipo de ceremonias lo usan y aparte si lo usan para pues, tipo sembrar maíz o diferentes cosas como actividades ceremoniales durante la vida diaria de Guadalajara pues Tita, when he could take a 
Isunala patemi kwa, watia patemi kwa, tio na ora kirebuta tami kwa taiwa mta ta imien mukita wa miko tangwa utani na tamu ndwa la ora tata wa tumu kwa tenu kama ame muku tatene yule na tatu kal tatu kal muti ne TV ya tayo na itrete rego kala tatu kal tana itmo kupuli tata wa tumu na ukano wate ya muku tene yule tumu na tene TV ma Wati apa tene atau mana tetena kui via tuan Muhammad entau karlu apa juga tene besar watan. El hikuri para nosotros es nuestra vida. Cuando peregrinamos tomamos el hikuri y a la vez tomamos el agua bendita, el manantial que hay allá. Y ese agua bendita lo traemos a la comunidad, hacemos las ceremonias, el ritual, para que llueva, para todos los humanos y para los animales. Para nosotros, uh, el jicuri es vida, tanto como la urra, la planta sagrada de tinta amarilla que hay en el desierto, en conjunto con el jicuri, es nuestra vida. Ahí está, ahí está nuestra vela, ahí está la, la medicina sagrada que alimenta nuestro espíritu, el espíritu virrálica. Uh, Hikuri is what the heart that lives in Virikuta is the heart uh, of, of the world. That's why the pilgrims go to Virikuta and collect este, the sacred water that is there. It goes together with the medicine. And this water, when we bring it back, when we do the peyote dance, uh, it brings the rain. And that's how we call the rain. That's how we call uh, the, pues, the spirits and uh, life for all of us. So uh, we also together with the plant of the Ura, that is a painting, a root that grows there in the garden. Those two plants go together with the, me with the medicine and that. And it's just the, what uh, identifies us with Creator, and we can uh, talk to God like that. So it's how we have it for our daily way of life. Is that where our culture has its candle and its spirit, and that's where we put our prayers. Okay, gracias. Um, I believe I read somewhere. Uh, in some of the information about their work, that they consider um, the preservation of their land, culture, and medicine not just important for themselves and their community, but for the whole world. Is that correct? And if so, why? Que leyó en un lugar que los guiraricas rezan para todo el mundo, que la peregrinación es para todo el mundo, que si si eso es correcto, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué? Que se lo pueden explicar. Eh, aquí en la tierra, en la naturaleza, eh, está la vida. Los lugares sagrados, los cinco, los cuatro horizontes y el centro es lo que conforma nuestra vida, nuestra cosmovisión. Eh, conforma, eh, equilibra el mundo. Eh, y lo que nosotros hacemos es para todos los humanos y para todos los animales, para que no haya enfermedades, para que haya buena salud. Eh, rezamos por todos, no nomás para nosotros. Por todo hacemos, por todo el planeta hacemos eh, eh, a que haya buena salud, a que haya buena vida. Eh, there in, in this planet, este we believe that everything is connected uh, through the elements, through Mother Earth, through everything. So when we go to Virikuta, we, we, we pray for this, this uh, harmony with Mother Earth so we can have life with it, so we can utilize it the best way we can, be, have value for what we have, no? That's it. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. 
Um, I'm wondering about the role of uh, music in the ceremonies. Uh, for example, the Native American Church in the United States and Canada also use the peyote medicine. Um, they have um, uh, their whole ceremony, not the whole ceremony, I've, I've participated in many of them actually in the United States, and um, the music, the songs, they're, they're chant-like songs in their case. They they pretty much carry the whole night. I mean, there's, you know, people pray out loud sometimes and other things happen, but the music, the songs are sung by the members of the, like not just one person, but the whole group um, mm -hmm. uh, sings these uh, prayer songs all night. Um, and uh, other, other uh, traditions also use music a lot in their ceremonies. So I'm wondering, uh, how does music play into the ceremonial work that uh, the Wirari could do? What is the role of the music in the ceremonies? Because he has been in the Native American Church and he has found that the music is what takes the ceremony. So, if you can describe a little bit of how the music comes from, where it comes from, y cómo se usan las ceremonias, si hay, si hay diferentes cantos, quién puede cantar las canciones, si son todos o no más cierta gente. What la música eh, que tocamos nosotros, los instrumentos, no, nosotros los fabricamos y eh, la música lo aprendemos en la peregrinación eh, consumiendo eh, la medicina, el hikuri. Hay diferentes tipos de música, música de nuestras deidades, de, de, los, de las deidades que están en Viricuta, música de los santos, música que está donde nace la milpa, el maíz, eh, y así nosotros cantamos, podemos cantar sin tocar instrumentos, o cuando tocamos el instrumento, eh, expresamos nuestro conocimiento. Uh, the, the, the music, it comes from the, the medicine, and uh, learning from the medicine, consuming the medicine in Viricota. And there's different ways and different songs that we learn in Viricuta that talk about the different spirits that live there, different plants, different uh, uh, mountains, water springs, etc., etc. And those there's songs also that we have that we have for different ceremonies also in with our saints, and also when we have to plant our corn, we have different songs. And we have songs with instruments that those instruments, we are the ones that have to build them and from certain kinds of trees in certain seasons. But everything, we learn it from the medicine, uh, even planting our corn and everything comes from, from, from it. To get, it's all together, the music, the corn and, and the medicine like that. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, excelente. Gracias, Miguel um, okay. y Rafael. Um, <clears throat> um, 
Okay, Santiago, I don't know if this next question is going to go anywhere or not, but um, it depends on whether uh, the gentlemen know anything about this. Uh, there is a um, uh, what's sometimes called a psychedelic renaissance going on around the world. Many mm -hmm. more people are using some of these medicines, ayahuasca in particular, psilocybin mushrooms, the San Pedro cactus, also known as Huachuma, and some others. Um, I'm wondering, do they are they aware of this renaissance and do they have any um, feelings or thoughts about it, how it's going or what they think of it? Que ahorita hay un movimiento que se llama el renacimiento psicodélico que mucha gente en el mundo este, está tomando ayahuasca, hongos diferentes como eh, el Swat, San Pedro, diferentes medicinas. Ustedes qué piensan de, de que haya tanto así y que pues que dónde queda en la medicina que ustedes cargan en Kiko y dentro de esto cómo ustedes les gustaría que todo el mundo lo haga o no que no lo haga toda la gente o no más pues como esa es, y si saben de este problema de este pues de, de este de este renacimiento psicodélico Bueno, eh, nosotros, eh, los abuelos, siempre platican en la comunidad que el ser humano ya eh, ha avanzado más y ha buscado medicina por el contexto que vive actualmente. Busca medicina, cómo salir espiritualmente adelante. Y, y también agradecemos nosotros que muchos investigadores hayan descubierto el jicuri y lo hayan difundido y a, y a base de eso han buscado nuestra medicina de jicuri han llegado a nuestra comunidad buscando eh, eh, ese proceso de, de sus vidas a mejorar su salud y, pero nosotros eh, Seguimos haciendo la peregrinación de igual manera como lo iniciaron nuestros ancestros y, y con nosotros se han integrado más gente eh, para saber más de esta medicina. ¿Y ¿Quieres saber cómo, qué opinas de quién la hace? Y, así, ¿sabes? Mm, y para nosotros eh, está bien que la gente que busca su renacer, llegue con nosotros, pero que lleguen bien con nosotros, uh -huh. que llegue bien a, a los abuelos uh -huh. a, a investigar bien para cómo consumir la medicina, no llegar solo al desierto. Uh -huh. Ese es siempre lo que nosotros recomendamos. Mientras lo usen de esa manera, les va a ayudar. Uh -huh. So we have, este, first of all, he's very thankful to all the, I'm very thankful to all the uh, community that has come and do research about this medicine. I'm very thankful that, that with their scientists and anthropologists that have come visit the tribe since I remember, like uh, wanting to know more about it, wanting to, este, how we use it in our daily way of life and how they can also use it. People have asked uh, our elders, no? But, uh, uh, so we, we are always very thankful that they they have come and and we we believe that everybody can uh, benefit from from the medicine and open open up their their heart and use it to be benefit their way of life. So uh, saying that, what the, also the tribe has is the uh, ask is that uh, everybody should. Uh, always should go and ask permission to them because a lot of people go to the desert and uh, do to they want to experience the medicine they don't ask permission to the tribe anymore so there's a lot of people and travelers and everybody that they they wish they could mm, know so they can tell them more about it tell them the stories about it tell them the way their their people have lived for it and how the elders use it and different ways of preparing it and etc etc the rather than este, 
uh, just going and experience it by by yourself. So that's that's something that the tribe wants. So with but they are aware of the of the movement, but like they just want to be counted in. You know, like they have a voice like that. I guess. Mm-hmm. What he said. Claro, gracias. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, uh, uh, tengo an idea para este momento. Um, Mark has some slides of the artwork. Uh, I don't know exactly whose it is, if some of it's Miguel's or if it's collected from various members of the community. But I'm going to suggest to Mark that he start uh, putting some of those slides on and perhaps you know, Miguel you know. can talk a little bit about them while that's happening. Oh, but I also yeah. want to ask a question for Miguel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I also want to ask a question for Miguel, um, uh, um, starting with a quick statement. Uh, I'm aware that in a number of indigenous cultures, uh, art is not separate from the sacred work, the ceremonial work, the worldview, uh, the sacred worldview of the community. Yeah. And I'm wondering what the role of art or the relationship of art to um, the, you know, that sacred work is in their community, in their nation. Este, que, ¿Cuál es la, la relación de, de la, lo sagrado con el arte? Y ¿De dónde viene? Uh-huh. Y... Eh, en el arte de nosotros como dijimos anteriormente consumimos el jicuri y cuando estamos en el estado de jicuris eh, vemos el rostro de nuestras deidades el rostro del venado azul y sus colores el multicolor entonces en las piezas expresamos toda nuestra cultura eh, aquí en mi pulsera por ejemplo aquí está la cara del venado, eh, eh, se ve la imagen del jicuri, entonces es lo que nosotros expresamos en las figuras. Ejemplo, el jaguar significa el fuego. El fuego antes, cuando nació, eh, se, conver- se convertía en jaguar. El fuego se convierte en jaguar, en lobo eh, y en el león. Esos tres animales son prote- protectores de del nuestro abuelo fuego. Y en esos animales reflejamos todas las deidades, el rostro de las deidades, así como entendemos la vida. Ahí podemos ver el eh, símbolo de planta de maíz. Mm, eh, podemos ver eh, águilas, águilas que son los... Eh, las deidades que están en el cielo, eh, ojos de Dios, diferentes formas de jicuri, cada persona entiende eh, diferente a las deidades y los plasma de diferente manera. Uh, when we eat the medicine in Viricuta, we see the, the face of our deities, of our spirits, of our grandpas, our grandmas, um, our old, eldest ones. We, so that's what we put here on this, on our art. That's what, like, for example, here, uh, there, there was a, a jaguar, a red jaguar on the pictures. And that, uh, that represents the, the beginning of creation. Uh, there, when the fire came, there was no sun and the fire was there. And the uh, fire used to turn himself into, into tiger. So he, there's a sacred site also that we have there for this story. So in that, uh, we everything that comes from our cosmology, we see the eyes of God, the corn, different figures and the meaning and how all of them relate. Uh, there was a, also a, a chameleon there that represents the, the, the under, how you say it, like the protection. So it's that cosmology that we see in Viricota uh, through eating the medicine of peyote of Hikuri. So um, just for our viewers, by the way, um, Hikuri or Ikuri, um, that's another word for their, <laughs> their word for the peyote, correct? Yeah, yeah yes. the word for the, for the medicine, peyote, is Hikuri. Peyote hikuri. comes from Nahuatl, from peyote. Yeah. Okay, 
Thank you. Yeah. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Mark. Um, <clears throat> but before doing so, I just want to ask um, Miguel uh, and or um, uh, Don Rafael, um, si tienes uh, más que um, hacer, or um, pardon me, hablar, or decirnos, uh, one last message before I turn it back over to Mark. Que si tienes algo más que decir así de para para la cámara o quieren decir algo usted también don Rafa. Que bueno petico elo que que yo te digo no no que petico elo que te anan que vi le cuta hasta o que me que que me llega que yo y eh y cura no como va en el chuba que un petico elo vi le cuta cuesta. Mmm ya chuba no cuelo Dice, yo pienso que nuestra cultura nunca se acaba, que mis hijos y mis nietos sigan el camino mío y, y toda nuestra cultura permanezca. Y, y lo que dicen ellos, nuestros abuelos, nuestros papás que todavía viven, hemos recorrido todos los lugares sagrados haciendo estudios porque ya son pocos los que existen todavía existen y, y les hemos pedido apoyo a nuestros amigos eh, al grupo de Santiago les pedimos apoyo hace cinco años les permitimos nosotros el centro ceremonial Tonohuame que conocieran uh, nuestra cultura uh, que comieran el jicur y la medicina y también a la vez nosotros les, les solicitamos avalado por la comunidad, por la asamblea, que consiguieran apoyos para ese lugar sagrado, Miricuta, ya que está en riesgo. Y hasta ahorita tenemos ya más de un año trabajando y creamos un proyecto que se llama eh, Proyecto Pre Preservación de Miricuta. Y hasta ahorita estamos muy agradecidos nosotros porque hemos adquirido un terreno que casi está por finalizar y ahí sigue, ahí falta meter proyectos productivos, ayudar a los ejidatarios de Viricuta, trabajar con ellos y, y que ellos no acepten las minerías y que nosotros les ayudemos porque a ellos también no les conviene que haya minería porque acaba con el agua. Y ellos tienen sus ganados, sus plantas medicinales, todo. Son campesinos como nosotros los que viven ahí. Entonces nosotros queremos trabajar mucho y, y, y hemos estado viajando a diferentes partes del mundo para difundir esta información y a la vez solicitar apoyos, apoyos con científicos y, y de manera económica también y recursos humanos que se integre con nosotros uh -huh. para salvaguardar nuestra cultura. Uh -huh. uh, for, for me, for my uncle here, este, he says that his culture is never gonna end the that's the instructions that he has to he had to do for 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 uh, from his elders to keep his culture going so that's he wants it going for his kids his grandkids great great grandkids to come because that's the way of life with the medicine that they need to keep going if not his way of life that they've been preserving for all these years is gonna die um este, nowadays este, we have authorized, uh, uh, we have asked peop uh, people outside our community to help us and we have authorized este, a non-profit uh, to help us with this project to, to start financing 
buying land that is being threatened by the mining companies, buying it back. So to the tri I'm putting it on tribal lands on our tribe's name so we can preserve it. And we have acquired around 226 hectares. Um, we we want to ask help for the international community. If they can help us, any scientists out there, biologists, people that know about this, the pre, uh, permaculture. We need to do a lot of work in the area. We need to fix the environment there that is, has been a lot of damage because this medicine grows there naturally by God, not planted or anything. So. We, we, we need help from the community with any funds, with anything. We are, we are all, we are, we, we are asking for help. The, the project that we have uh, authorized is called the Virikuta Preservation Project. Um, the whole tribal council and the ceremonial centers have the Minister of Culture of our tribe has also approved it. So, all that tribal assembly uh, with our traditional authorities have approved it. So we are asking for help to the international community to help with this and uh, so we can preserve our tradition and our way of life. Thank you. Uh, muchas gracias. Um, muchísimas gracias por su, um, uh, su uh, entendimiento, your understanding. <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, so um, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Mark in a second, but just to want to say again, uh, much, muchísimas gracias, uh, caballeros, señores. Um, uh, and uh, they will, these gentlemen and Santiago, I assume you'll be there at our conference on November 4th, 5th and 6th in Vancouver. Yeah. And uh, the you'll be bringing the artwork as well, which is to raise money for this uh, essential or very important cause. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, excellent. Right. So, um, Mark, you you want to finish things up, and you have a little video you want to show too, right? Yeah, we we're going to close off the beautiful video that's been created, showing the lands and the people, and, and just outlining their project. I, I want to just say thank you so much, gentlemen, for for joining us here. Uh, to have this conversation and share the work that you're doing to preserve your lands. It, it's something that's uh, near and dear to us here at the Spirit Plant Medicine Group um, because we recognize the, the, the importance and, and the power of the Indigenous cultures around the world. And it's something that we're always active to support in any which way that we can. And, you know, as we move forward, if there's anything that we can do to support your work, we're happy to do so. And we look forward to meeting you in person in November at the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference, uh, seeing your artwork. There's some beautiful pieces there that I just yeah. I it, completely. Sorry to interrupt, study. Mark, but let, let Santiago tell them yeah. what you just said. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you for bearing along with me, Mark. Also, okay. you want it? Only my, my CPU is Windows 95, man. <laughs> well, you're Would doing you... a great job. Sí, sí, okay, sí. Este que que muchas gracias por por todo, que vamos a cerrar el programa, que este a ellos les interesa mucho ayudar a preservar la tierra y que saben que van a llevar su artesanía. Nos vemos en Canadá en noviembre y pues gracias por todo. Que les agradece a ustedes por entender nuestro sentir y gracias por la invitación y allá estaremos. Uh, so I'm very thankful and thank you to all of you, the community of the, the whole event and uh, the Plant Medicine Spirit Plant Medicine Conference and este, thank you, we'll be there and thank you for having a heart and remembering our, my people in, 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 your, in, this, in this conference. El, el placer es mío y, y Mark. <laughs> well, it's absolutely our pleasure. It's, it's yeah. so important to um, really preserve and, and bring to the attention uh, the ancient indigenous ways that are really impacting our culture around the world uh, today. So I thank you for uh, stepping up, stepping out, traveling the world and, and sharing your work, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Eh, muchas gracias, que es muy importante preservar las indígenas y gracias por viajar por el mundo y echarle gana. Pampa Dios. Pampa Dios. Thank you, thank you.
Buenas noches. Muy buenos días. <laughs> buenos días. <laughs> okay. So I guess we're going yeah. to wrap it up, Stephen. Yeah, go, you go ahead, Mark. All right. So we're going to play a, a short go video to just to again. close out our session today. Okay. And if you feel called to contribute and, and support their work, there's links below wherever you're watching this, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Facebook or, you know, in our membership platform, uh, please, please consider uh, supporting these gentlemen in their work. Thank you. Hasta luego. 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 Get louder, Mark. ไอ้ไอ้ตัวเราเนาะเตวาลีรู้ก็ปาปาวันเตาคิดเสร็จมันคุณมีกี่วาคะไอ้คนที่ทรัพย์กัดที่วาลีรีทรัพย์กัดที
Ja, 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 ja,